I bolt awake, the blast of the truck's horn rattling my skull. I am panicking as I write myself in my seat, my torso cramping from the all too sudden movement. A large truck has gone by us, leaving behind the faintest whiff of exhaust fume in the air. The desert air was dry and hot, whipping against my shirt. I look around at my surroundings. For a moment, I stare at the strange blonde man, driving with the sunglasses pushed back up into his hair, my brain bringing up a blank as I try to remember who he is, and why he is in my truck. And why does he look unfazed by that rack the truck made? Mike, you're awake. How are you feeling? You slept right through the last six hours. I was starting to think you were dead. Mike. The name is familiar. That is my name. I am Mike. I live in LA, California. And this is the semi-truck that I love more than life itself. Why are we both on the road? And who is this strange man driving my truck? Prickly heat settles at the back of my neck, teasing the fine hairs up as a nebulous unsettling feeling sets in. My body begins to inch away as an awful thought begins to occur to me. A risky plan formulates in my head. My eyes dart towards the glove box where I keep my gun. The strange man turns towards me, and I become stupefied. His eyes. They are weird. Freaky weird. An indigo blue that seems to be pulsating as the light reflects on them, with tiny pinpoints of swirling red. I told you not to go hard on the absinthe last night. But, as you put it yourself, Mike does as he wants, whenever he wants. He smiles, shaking his head. You look terrible, I've never seen anyone put them back quite like you. That little celebration last night nearly killed you. Do me a favor. The next time you plan on blacking out, try not to be on a deadline. I had to drag you from the bar back into the truck myself. We'll be lucky if you drop off this trailer load by tomorrow. His name drops into my head like a penny into an empty jar, raising swirling dust of his identity to mind. Tony, I blurted out loud. His name is Tony. I met another trucker at the bar yesterday, and I am giving him a ride across the state. I'm just relieved out of all the guys I could have given a ride, he knows how to drive a six-wheeler. Tony looks at me askance, as though he cannot believe I actually forgot who he is. Don't worry, you'll be fine once we get some coffee into you. Tony reassured me. I relax against my seat, devoting my energy to the pulsing headache. How long was I out? Six hours. Might want to check your phone. You have like 15 missed calls from someone named Tilda. Tilda, my girlfriend. She will have my guts if she learns I have been drinking. I had been sober for six months and have my green sobriety coin in my pocket at this very moment. Tilda was so proud of me. Why did I drink? I whisper beneath my breath. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. There's water in the back if you're thirsty. I twist my body around in my seat, reaching for the cooler, and my eyes catch something. A spanking new portable grill set. When did I buy a grill? You didn't. You wanted for chugging an entire bottle of absinthe. They were reconsidering giving it to you, but you grabbed the second bottle and tried to smash the barkeep's head in when he tried taking it from you. After you won, that's when you really started packing those shots down. You were a mess. I'm guessing, you must have been a really fun guy in your youth. I feel a hot flush of shame as I take out a bottle of water. I twist the cap off and start to wonder whether or not to let Tilda know of my little hiccup as I drink the water in long gulps. It soothes my parched throat, and I begin to think a little clearer. Try as I may, I cannot remember the events of last night. They are hazy, and flit in and out of the edge of my mind, darting off before I can catch them. I only have Tony's words to go by. I am tempted to lie to Tilda when we get back from our little vacation, but I know guilt will eat me up from the inside. And I've never been a good liar. While I contemplated this, I hear Tony mumbling something next to me. Hmm? I look up. I haven't been paying attention. It seems this hangover is in full effect and is only just getting started. 
I'm saying we need to stop for gas. He taps on the fuel gauge, and I see the needle is almost pointing at empty. We still have at least a hard 10-hour drive before we get to the drop-off facility. According to the map, we are three miles away from the nearest gas station. A memory flashes, sharp and painful. I wince against the flare of sharp ache. It is gone before I understand what it is. I close my eyes, massaging my temples. I'm on the job, I'm supposed to make a delivery. Why did I stop off to drink? I can't remember. Tony pulls into the gas station. It has a convenience store. The attendant at the counter is tall, thin, with long black hair that poked into his eyes, and he was surly faced, his eyes blank. I guess anyone would be surly under this heat. An older woman with thinning brown hair, and one leg, sat in a chair against the wall, behind the counter, overlooking the attendant. She has the same pinched expression. I guess she must be related to the attendant. I pick up a few bottles of water and some snacks. The woman stands up from her chair and crutches over to the counter, pushing the younger gentleman aside. She runs my items through the scanner with a brooding quiet. Are you on a road trip? She asks in a gravelly voice. Just passing through. My answer appears to have made her even more sullen. I pay her her due amount and lift my purchase. Dangerous road to be traveling alone. Best you keep driving and don't stop till you get to where you're going. She says to my back as I head for the door. I look back, but the woman has returned to her chair and her magazine. When I get to the car, Tony is nowhere to be found. I walk back inside, I ask the male attendant at the counter where Tony is, but he seems deeply confused by my question. Who? He questions with a blank expression on his face. My friend. Blonde. Tall. We came in together. I didn't see anyone else come in the store. The heat and hangover make me irritated, and I do not appreciate what he is playing at. My friend, Tony, came in with me. The attendant eyes me as though I am dangerous to his well-being. He takes a step back and lifts his hands up, palms facing out. I don't know what you are talking about, man. You came in alone. You were all by yourself. My temper is beginning to flare. What the hell is wrong with you people, I shout back at him. My patience is thin by this point. What's going on? Tony says from behind me. I look back at the attendant, and he is backed up further, his eyes wide. Nothing, I reply back to Tony. Where were you? Bathroom, outside in the back. Are we done here? Yeah. We're done, I reply back to Tony. I hear a shuffle in the store. I follow the sound back to the counter. The old woman scurried off into the back room. Nearly kicking over her chair in the process. I'm sick of this place already. I just want to go back in the truck, and sleep this hangover off to think of what to tell Tilda when I call her back. We walk back out to the truck. Tony takes his place at the wheel, and we continue on our journey. I look back in the mirror as we drive off, and the attendant is standing outside watching us depart, as white as a sheet, his eyes large in his face. I continue to think about this for the next couple of hours, but I decide to dismiss it as just strange people just doing strange things. I must have dozed off because when I wake, it's evening, and the car is making a weird noise, slowing to a crawl. No, no, no. Tony is groaning. Why won't you work? He slams his hands on the wheel when the car finally stops, dying with a sad whine. What's happening? I ask with a yawn. I don't know. Tony is getting out of the car and walking round to pop the hood up, smoke escapes in a black haze. I get out after him, wondering why my truck chose to break down. It is rapidly getting dark, and help is miles away from here. I laid down beneath the hood, doing my best to examine what could be wrong with the engine. I lay there, thinking we will have to camp inside the car, even if we understood what broke the truck, neither of us is a mechanic. I stood up, turned to tell him, but he was gone. One moment he was standing next to the truck while I'm under the hood, the next he's gone. 
I walk around my truck, looking about for Tony. He didn't go back inside the truck, and he isn't anywhere around me. Where did he go? I wonder, whirling around. Light is fast vanishing. Tony? I call. No reply. A creepy feeling begins to descend. Is he playing a trick on me? But Tony isn't a trickster. Is he? I feel so alone and exposed. My skin begins to itch as I get the oppressive feeling like someone is looking at me. My cell phone rings. Loud and intrusive. I jump. Tilda's name flashes on the screen. I answer it. Hey. She sounds exhausted. I know she is just clocking out from her work. I am so warm and comforted hearing her speak that I hold the phone tightly to my ear. Hi, babe. I say with a smile in my voice. How's your trip going? Did you make the delivery yet? Well, the truck broke down and Tony disappeared on me. I don't know where he has gone. Tony? Tilda is perplexed. Who is Tony? Is that a friend you made on your trip? You didn't tell me about him. Why didn't you answer when I called you this morning? Who is Tony? I feel unsteady. How do I explain my encounter with Tony without bringing up my slip-up last night? If I wasn't still hungover, I might have a quicker response to her questions. I open my mouth, but nothing comes out. Tilda doesn't mess around. She isn't the type to joke about drinking, or relapsing. She wouldn't let me off easily. Mike? Are you alright? I recover myself. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Tony. I just met him, yeah. Listen, sweetheart, I'll call you back, alright? Love you. I end the call before she has an answer. Who is Tony? I think to myself. Do I really even know this guy? Where is he? Did going on a one-night bender make me crazy? Am I still drunk? I put down the hood and turn around. My heart jumps into my throat, and I can barely suppress a scream as I come face to face with a middle-aged man carrying binoculars. He smiles at me. Hello. Having a bit of car trouble? Where did he spring from? And how did he move so silently that I didn't hear him approaching? My heart is racing wildly. Yeah. It broke down. I have no idea what is wrong with it. The man made a small cooing noise of sympathy. I know nothing about cars, but they might be able to help you in that hotel up there. He points forward, off at a light in the horizon. There? I repeat. Yeah. About half a mile's walk. I'm just coming from there. I walked out here to watch the nightlife and try something new. He smiles guiltily. Hesitantly, I ask the stranger. Did you perhaps see a man? Tall, about my height. Blonde. The man shakes his head. No. Did you lose someone? I remember why I was traveling with Tony in the first place. He just wanted a ride. Maybe someone picked him up while I inspected the engine. I wouldn't put it past him. After all, I hardly knew the guy. No. I say to the stranger. I guess I haven't. Best get a move on before it gets completely dark. I gaze out into the darkness, following the faint light of the hotel he pointed to off in the distance. I can't help but think to myself, there is something wrong with this guy. His presence feels creepy. What is a guy doing walking around at night in the desert with night vision binoculars? Nonetheless, I thank him and lock up my truck. I can't help but skirt past him as I begin the walk to the hotel. Be careful. He calls after me. The services there may cost an arm and a leg. I try to ignore his chuckling and how cold it makes me feel. True to his word, there is a hotel about half a mile from where my truck broke down. The hotel has a simple facade and a neon signpost that reads, Hotel Eagles. I enter the reception and am greeted by the receptionist, a diminutive white-haired girl with a broad smile. Hello, welcome to Hotel Eagles. Anything you need, you can find it here. She says in tune. Good, 
I was hoping to find a mechanic for my car. It broke down about half a mile south of here. The girl never loses her smile as she conveys concern for me with her eyes. Oh. We do have someone with such a skill set, but he isn't in right now. Would you like to wait in the bar? Or get a room? Both, I reply, but first the bar. It's been a long day. Right this way. The receptionist says after I've paid for the night. She leads me down the hall and into the bar. Dinner is almost ready. You're in luck, we just finished the last of our reserves today. Lucky for you, we just restocked, so our special tonight is fresh steaks. My stomach rumbles at the thought of juicy steaks. It feels like I haven't eaten in days. And here. First drinks on the house. She hands me a flute of pink champagne. I hesitate for a moment, thinking about my actions that lead me to this event in the first place. But I resolved myself, the truck won't likely be fixed for a couple of days, and I have yet to tell my dispatch about the bad news. I'm likely to get my pay cut short anyway from the late delivery. Not a phone call I'm looking forward to, so why not make myself comfortable beforehand? I took a sip and appreciated it. I'll see if the chef is around. She says and walks away briskly, leaving me at the door with my drink. I down it. I look around. The bar is empty, save for a lone person, drinking. As I come closer, I realize I know him. My anger flares. Tony. I yell. Why did you leave me alone in the desert? Tony barely reacts to me, continuing with his silent drinking. I march up to him and grab him by his shoulder, ready to demand an answer. He sets his drink on the counter and looks at me, his eyes blank and his expression hard. Do you mind? He says in a monotone voice. My hand drops from his shoulder. What is wrong with you? Tony returns to his drinking. He seems like he is waiting for something. Suddenly, there is a sharp ringing noise. I jump. The receptionist is back. Dinner is served. She announces with a little trill. A burly man in a chef's outfit wheeled dinner into the bar. He stops right beside Tony and lifts the giant covered platter onto the counter. Bon appétit, he says with a dip, and leaves. Tony puts his drink away, an animated expression of anticipation on his face. It is such an ugly animalistic look, it compels me to look away yet something attracts me to keep my gaze on him. It is as though a magic act is going to unfold before my very eyes. The strange man, Tony, lifts the cover off the platter, filling the bar with the wonderful aroma of roasted steak. But if only it was steak. Instead of juicy tenderloins resting on a bed of potatoes and vegetables with gravy, a perfectly well done, grilled human arm rests on a delectable bed of sliced lemons baked potatoes drizzled with honey and gravy. A person's arm. The room spins, and I with it. I turn for the door, but my knees buckle beneath my weight as the floor rises rapidly to meet me. I flail wildly and land on my back, staring up at the mirrors on the ceiling. The penny drops. I was drugged. The champagne. It must have been the champagne. My legs, I can't move my legs. I am unable to move. I just lie there, splayed on the floor as Tony demolishes his horrid steak. I can only lie there and contemplate what awaits me. Tony continues to devour his steak, periodically looking down to the ground to meet my horrified expression. Chuckling, he's chuckling. Why is he chuckling? So many questions fill my head all at once. Am I the only one seeing this? Whose arm is he eating? How long was he planning on bringing me here? Did he sabotage the truck while I was in the gas station? Is his name really even Tony? The door opens yet again, and in comes the chef. I can see his movement through the mirror. He clears Tony's empty platter. Then he comes to me. He seizes my arm and begins to drag me out into the kitchen, whistling an old familiar tune, under his breath. Another steak. Chef. Tony calls out, his voice deepening into a sharp growl. Medium rare this time. 
Compliments of my friend. Welcome to Hotel Eagles. I hear the receptionist say as I'm dragged past her into the kitchen. Such a lovely place. Anything you need, we have it here. We hope you like us enough not to leave.